Hello. Today we're going to talk about the trigeminal nerve. We're going to look at uh, the basic beginning part of the trigeminal nerve and the components that make it up. In a future video, we'll look at the mandibular division and the maxillary division separately. So today is trigeminal nerve. And as the name implies, tri Geminal means it starts in three parts. And in fact, uh, this is the, f the fifth cranial nerve, and in fact it's the largest cranial nerve, and as it comes off the brain, it almost immediately divides into three components. The first component is called the ophthalmic division. The second component is called the maxillary division. And the last component is called the mandibular division. And these divisions supply basically sensory to the face. And if you divide the, three, the cranial nerve into its three divisions, basically the ophthalmic supplies the upper third the maxillary supplies the middle third, and the mandibula supplies the lower third of the face. And this is the basic arrangement for the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. For simplicity, we talk about these as the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve. And we write that out usually as V1, V2, and V3. So V1, when we write it like this, is really Roman numerals 5, and 1 means the first division. Roman numeral 5, 2, means the maxillary division. The trigeminal nerve is the largest of the cranial nerves, and it is fundamentally a sensory nerve. All three components have a large sensory part to them. It is only the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve that has an additional, quite critical, motor component to it. So the trigeminal nerve is fundamentally a large sensory cranial nerve with a small amount of motor. And just to bring this back to the embryology, I want to remind you that the sensory component is general somatic sensation. In other words, it's those two components of the sensory system welded together. The core component pain, temperature, and touch, and that special unique component called proprioception. Now, remember that general somatic sensation is the same system that applies in the spinal nerves that run off the spinal cord. So this fifth cranial nerve with its general somatic sensation component is no different to a spinal nerve in that it has a fundamentally a pain, temperature and touch component and that special proprioceptive component. The add-on motor component is quite special. That motor component, let's just draw it down here, that motor component is motor to pharyngeal arch derived muscle. So we know that that is special, visceral, motor. And that means it is to pharyngeal arch muscles and in fact it is to the muscles of mastication. Which are, by definition, from pharyngeal arch number one. 
So what we can see in summary is the trigeminal nerve is a large cranial nerve. It's the fifth cranial nerve. It has three components to it. All three components have a sensory part and the mandibular division has a little bit of motor. That sensory is general somatic sensation, same as you would see in spinal nerves, having pain, temperature and touch and proprioceptive components. And the motor component is special visceral motor. That means it's motor to all of the pharyngeal arch derived muscles and that set of muscles is called the muscles of mastication. So the trigeminal nerve is really the nerve of the first pharyngeal arch. Pharyngeal arch 1. And that's what makes the trigeminal nerve special. So let's go on now and have a look at where in a skull does the trigeminal nerve sit? The image we are looking at here in front of us is an image of the middle cranial fossa. And just to orientate you, here is the cribriform plate up here. Here will be the um, pituitary fossa, so the pituitary gland would sit there. And the two optic canals are here here and here. Now the most important structures to look at today are this slit or gap sitting just in here. That slit, or slit there is called the superior, superior orbital fissure. And a whole host of structures coming from the brain and heading towards the orbit run through that little slit there. This lovely round hole here is called foramen rotundum and that is a, a round hole where part of the trigeminal nerve exits. And the last foramen I want you to see is this oval shaped foramen just here which is called for foramen ovale and that is where part of the trigeminal nerve also exits. The other important feature just to notice, and it's actually easier to notice with your, some feeling of putting your finger on the area, is a little depression that sits just here. That little piece of bone, and this is in the petreous temporal bone, this is petreous temporal bone, petreous temporal bone here, and that little dent or fossa sitting right there is where the trigeminal ganglion sits and it makes a little indent in the bone. So if we look at the trigeminal nerve and how it's arranged within this middle cranial fossa, what we find is the major part of the cranial nerve, trigeminal nerve, comes off the pons to this little fossa and this is where the trigeminal ganglion sits. So this is where the large ganglion, directly equiv equ equivalent, so that is the trigeminal ganglion, let's write that out, trigeminal ganglion. And that trigeminal ganglion is exactly the same as the ganglion that you find at the dorsal root ganglia on spinal nerves. From this ganglia you immediately see the breaking up of the cranial nerve into its the trigeminal nerve into its three components. The first major component going out through foramen ovale. The second major component runs forward and exits through foramen rotundum. We'll just draw another piece to that, there it is, running out there. And the third piece runs all the way forward and exits through superior orbital fissure. So now you can see the three elements to the trigeminal nerve. There they are there. You can see the first division 
exiting through exiting through superior orbital fissure. The second division exiting through foramen rotundum right there and the third division exiting through foramen ovale right here. Now just to complete the story we have to add the motor component of this cranial nerve. The motor component of the cranial nerve actually comes off the pons completely separately and runs just underneath the ganglia and then heads down through foramen rotundum. It joins up with the mandibular division. So the little motor component, we'll just put a little M here to remind ourselves, the little motor component heads off with the mandibular division. But you notice it doesn't have any relationship to the ganglia. The ganglia itself, with all its cell bodies in it, is purely part of the sensory component of the trigeminal nerve. So that's how the trigeminal nerve starts from the pons to move through the middle cranial fossa to exit through its three major foramenae.